<laughs> yeah, we'll get her going here. Hopefully the stream actually works. I had to totally redo the... You guys got pulled fast last time. Yeah, the stream key. Yeah. Get ready. Get set. It's the Project Ion Podcast with Kevin, Andy, Jim, and Kyle, bringing you opinions on life from the basement in Northwest Iowa. Oh, come on. I really don't think that a president can do much about that issue. Yet. You are fake news. Well, it says a guy named Seats. No, <laughs> I'm like, kidding. Man, this shit whack, man. <laughs> I want to save him until he goes through puberty. And I'm dead. <laughs> Irritating. In the days of like Google Authenticator and stuff, it should be able to remember a device. That's kind of what I thought. Come on. Kind of janky, Cal. It is janky. What's up, Kyle? What's up? Make you a little bigger. Happy Pride here. Month. <laughs> Congratulations. Here we are, little gay. Good brave bastard. But we're doing it. But we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> I'm not seeing uh, our live stream, but maybe. Well, it claims we're live and we're also recording, so who oh, knows? Yeah. Maybe the stream key is not working yet again. Wouldn't surprise me. So What's a stream key? So the OBS software has to be plugged into your particular, like, us for us, a YouTube channel that, like, you know, hooks it up so it goes live, basically. So in order to, so we stream live to the Project Ion channel, I have to enter in a stream key from the YouTube channel into the software. Okay. And it's not terribly complicated, but it seems like it frequently resets or is effed up in one way or another so yeah it's been a pain in the ass i've had to dick with it oh i don't know probably four or five times i bet since we've been doing it like this son of a bitch i know yeah yeah i was just checking out i didn't have any uh, notification that we're live either hmm doesn't look like it yeah so those nerds out in california i know well it's nancy pelosi we're recording, so we can just uh, upload it later. Nancy Pelosi might, might want to clean up her street first, right, Cal? <laughs> oh, she's awful. Yeah. Disgusting woman. Nasty woman. So explain to the audience why you're not here in studio, Kyle. <laughs> I right? don't this do is a, yet that, another Kyle. irksome <laughs> Zoom cast. <laughs> they were wondering, are you, are you out of state or... No. Yeah, you must no. be like on the other side of the universe to have to use to Zoom. all my to all of my fans and followers. I am simply too lazy to go out of the house after eight o'clock. So, so we had a serious discussion about just starting without you <laughs> and not doing the link or any of that bullshit. Just too many. <laughs> hey, good. I would just went to bed. You won the coin toss, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, eh, we better eat. Tails never fails. <laughs> He's one of the hosts. We better include him. Yeah. Jeez. Not inclusive of the Project Ion podcast. That's right. Well, speaking of inclusivity, happy Pride Month. Yeah. Why don't we to get into yours. some material? We can pride right. it up. Des Moines mayor, other human rights supporters, and LGBTQ leaders raised a special pride flag to mark Pride Month. They say it's a time to inspire, educate, commemorate, and celebrate diversity. I've been out since I was probably 20, 19, 20 years old. So there's, I never thought we'd ever be at this point, let alone that I'd be able to get married legally uh, to my wife. What's wrong with their eyes? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what's so special about you? I mean, we're interviewing a gay person. Okay. Should they interview a straight for about Pride Month? What's yeah. so special? I don't, I guess I just don't get the hubble. It's their month, Kyle. 
Yeah. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just, I just don't understand. Like, they interview why. a pharmacist for Pharmacist Appreciation Month. Well, you, why not? We've got a month for everything else. Teachers. You know, I was thinking about yeah. that. Yes. So Kyle and I did the fireman golf thing yesterday. Yeah. And cops, firemen, nurses, teachers, I would say, are like the most self-aggrandizing professions that there are, you know. Absolutely. And uh, so, you know, wh- when when are we lawyers going to get a little thing on Facebook that you can put, you, yeah. you know, like I support the lawyers or. Thank a lawyer you today. Know, we, could, we could have a little benefit for the lawyers, maybe yeah. down at the town square or something like that. Yeah. Your appreciation comes in form of a check. I mean, for some of us, maybe. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. There's could... some broke ass lawyers. Yeah, they're <laughs> scraping by on court appointments and stuff. You know, yeah. they could probably use a little golf tournament. You know, to yeah, <laughs> and to, if nothing oh, else, wow. to raise yeah. morale. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of with you though. We got to think I about don't... morale. Well, you know, there's no break room for him to get pizza. In. Exactly. You know, I don't need a teacher appreciation month. I've already got June, July, and August. So. But you need a water bottle <laughs> <laughs> and some yeah. some goldfish. To what snack was on. it? Some, like, <laughs> it was like a, a thing of air, airline cookies and a, a <laughs> bottle of water. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Teacher appreciation. Oh, you are appreciated. Yeah. For the extra really. markers that you purchase yeah. for your classroom. Here's some crumbly, stale ginger snaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, snackies in the break room. Yeah. Oh man. We uh we'd always when I worked for the big hospital chain, we'd just get like just bullshit corporate promo stuff. Mm. Like you'd get a little well, a blanket that folds up into its own pouch, you know, everyone's oh, got 16 yeah. of those and you keep one in your car and <laughs> throw the rest away. <laughs> yep. It's just janky stuff that doesn't cost any money to them, but makes you feel special. Right. Well, what was those other things that were so ubiquitous? It was like the, uh, oh, it was made out of that hard plastic stuff, like a water canteen or, uh. God, what am the I? Nal jeans? Nal jeans, yes. Just nal jeans nal, for everything? Yes. Everything was an Al jean. Now everything's an insulated cup. Yeah. Got to have yeah. 16 insulated cups. Yep. <laughs> well, like the one I snapped, uh, I snapped Vin one one morning or something, sent him a picture. My cousin now is a network engineer uh, uh. for Shazam, like the atm people Ooh. so he does all like their backside server maintenance managing stuff but he gets he said he opened up his cupboard and there's like 40 of these insulated coffee mugs <laughs> with like cisco on them and windows yes. and all that this is michael you're talking michael about? Yeah. yeah michael spurge yeah the cousin that has no blood relation to me but looks Oh, yeah. And acts exactly like me. <laughs> yeah, <that was laughs> well, you know, that's the amazing thing. It's like you spend time around people, you just start looking like them. I mean, it's just... Uh, well, it's funny. At the at the wedding, his, like, best man joke was like, oh, obviously you can tell we're cousins, like, the family resemblance. <laughs> and my side just starts laughing, and Megan's yeah. side's like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, no. he's the cousin, right? Like, <laughs> don't know. I was bought on the blue yeah. light special. <laughs> <laughs> you sh- yeah, you share fifty percent of the DNA. Wait, no, you don't. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is, though, I'm wondering if he wasn't adopted from the same folks because he doesn't look anything like his brother and sister. Oh, really? Nothing. Looks just like his dad. Looks How like weird my- would that be? It'd be strange if you guys were like actually we're adopted out of the same like shitty house or something. And (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, though, that'd be weird because I think my birth mom was 14. He's five years older than me. So wow, 14 be some some fucked up math. Yeah, Yeah, 14, 14 and 15 for the birth birth Padres. Mm. Just banging. (laughs) So if you I've heard of this before. Now with the twenty three and me and the uh Oh sure. You know, the stuff like that. Ancestry and all that. Yes. So 
how does that stuff like as far as privacy rules and all the rest of it? Because I know like if you're if you adopt out a kid, from what I understand about the law, is it if you want to make it tough to figure out who you are, it's pretty tough. Like, I think it is. And mine, mine's always been very open. Um, like my parents could have shared it with me. Didn't. Um, but I never had any desire either. Uh-huh. I think maybe once when I was like a dickhead little seven year old or something, I'm like, I'm going to go find my birth parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <laughs> and my dad, like, they let me cool off, and my dad came up. He's like, you know that that'll that kill your mom, right? Yeah, like that. And and I took that to heart. So then I'm just like, well, fuck it. Like I don't care. Yeah. And uh, and so it had never been a a thing for me. But like when I was 18, those records are at courthouse. Yeah. Like I I can go pick it up tomorrow if I want to. Yeah, okay. And figure it out. Yeah. I've just never had any. There's why. Right. Yeah. You know the only thing that. I would like would be like family history for medical shit. Right. Um, but you could do a 23 and me for that too. Now like oh, they'll, okay. they'll run your gene sequence and see if you're predisposed to uh, prostate cancer yeah. or different things like that. Heart disease. So, well, I won't throw the name out there just because, but a, a friend of my dad's discovered that he, he had a child that he didn't know about. That, really? Yeah. Is she's you know a grown woman, obviously, and got children of her own, you know, and all of that. And, and it was like a fling yeah. thing. She never told him. Yeah, it was a situation. yeah. Basically, it was like a yeah. one nighter or something, or a didn't last long relationship, and you know, lost contact. Yeah, and... but they discovered the connection through the twenty three and Me type stuff, whatever. So, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I I'm call me paranoid they could have my dna they probably do probably have everybody's dna but like why just give it to yeah why just give it out there (laughs) you know well i mean i would prefer to sell it yeah give me money because you are you're helping them build their product right their product isn't telling you who your family tree is their product is the like subscription sales to help people build their family trees and to make their product better yeah right why just help them along? Right, Kyle? Fascinating. Dynamite. Dynamite drop in, Kyle. <laughs> well, let's get back to some Des Moines pride here for Kyle. Now the parade and other celebrations are back in full swing. And while there is much progress and awareness to celebrate, there were also disappointing setbacks. A lot of people think that LGBTQ awareness is enough, and it's not. Um, We need more than awareness because LGBTQ visibility without protection is tokenism. Mark (laughs) Moles. I just just want to see. Watch his face. (laughs) Let's deconstruct that one, Kyle. Well, I don't even know what she's saying. Awareness isn't enough. Yeah. What are we supposed to be aware of? That they're there. You need to be hyper aware. Well, Awareness she, without action is just tokenism. Right. Maybe she needs to be aware that I'm straight. <laughs> when when straight mud's going to be? Did you just gender this person, yeah. too, by the well, way? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's just all stupid. <laughs> all right. We got one more. On, in the, so, okay, Kyle, when I say, when I talk about gays, what do you think of? Uh, what? Like when <laughs> when you think about the gay community, and yeah. maybe the say the nineteen eighties. What do you think of Prince? Okay. <laughs> Yikes, <laughs> bro! Dude, bro I, I think I'm pretty sure Prince was just slaying pussy Mad. all day long. Yeah. Mad right. man. Oh, His one it. chick was uh, yeah. she ended up banging the Motley Crue guy. Uh, she's a big crack, crack lady. Yeah, like Nikki Six, yeah, maybe. Or? It was Nikki. Yeah, she got in with Nikki. I'll think of her name. It was like one of those one-person names, like Madonna. Okay. All right. Well, the the correct answer was AIDS. So yes. oh, okay. yeah. everyone has AIDS. So here's our next Pride video. I didn't want to see it. Or I didn't want to say it. Spurge will remember this. Oh boy. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that what most people don't know about AIDS could fill a video? Time out. The truth about HIV, AIDS, and you. It's filled with facts and fun. Rent one free at participating <laughs> video stores. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's a fun so that guy catches an arapaima those oh, fish yeah. are humongous oh yeah yeah, yeah that's a dope dinosaur one. we'll have to watch that some other time but isn't that magic johnson video? magic johnson man yeah. did you guys ever see the south park about aids oh yeah and magic johnson you got How enough the, cash he the can cure is <laughs> about two hundred fifty thousand dollars <laughs> shot directly into the bloodstream <laughs> You, you got used to have to cash. pack it and like sex ed or something in school about AIDS. You got to pack it on AIDS? Well, there's going to be yeah. a vaccine soon. It's in like phase yeah. three trials, bro. Wow. That's yeah, get, impressive. Get an AIDS jab. <laughs> Jesus. We're just going to keep jabbing you. Yeah. We're going to be jabbing for Every two weeks, it'll be a new jab. That's right. <laughs> and That's then right. booster. <laughs> you got your booster, Kyle? Nope. <laughs> Two and done. <laughs> Number five is going to be coming out this uh, fall. Uh, yeah. Look out. It's going to be a spicy one. Yeah. This is a serious question. So if you would have gone for every COVID vaccine possible at this point, how many could you get right now? And you, so just the average person is, and you're over 50 is four. Okay. If you or... Three, if you got J&J first, and then you're considered complete. If you are an immunocompromised person over 50, you could have five. Okay. If you're any of us, you can have three. Okay. So, so that, okay, go ahead, Kyle. Boosters Sorry. Or, boosters are three total, counting the first two. Total shots. Okay. Total inoculations. Gotcha. It's a good word. So is it basically a thing where it just sort of, like, falls off or wanes after a period of time or well it's not the vaccine working in the body right the vaccine just teaches the immune system so it's your circulating antibodies that will fall off Mm. over time and so the goal of the booster is just to reintroduce the pathogen or the genetic components of the pathogen so it trains your white cells okay on what it should hunt Mm. essentially but local numbers are uh, ticking back up slow the spread kyle that's why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay. We got antiretrovirals for it now. I'm doing my part. You come on up and I'll get you some malnupiravir. Nice. I, uh, I'm doing my research. Are you guys? It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Andy's whole life is doing the research. Did, didn't I? <laughs> I just, just told you the research. Yeah. <laughs> You're not six feet away. I'm following oh. science. Our mouths are about six yeah, feet away. Yeah, I, I think we were actually probably within the bounds of social distancing right yeah. now. Oh, so you're, you're, uh, we're just listening to Fouch. Is Fouch going to continue to be a thing, do you think? Or, I he mean, kind of fell off, I think, hasn't he? No, he's still the whatever Biden's mm-hmm. chief homie. Or well, whatever. he doesn't hear from him. He just, I mean, it's we're not in an official pandemic right now, so he yeah. doesn't have to have daily press conferences. Well, we're not in a pandemic, he's, he's, and he, I would, I would say he's definitely not being trotted around by the media. No, at yeah. the level that he was a year or so ago. Right. And I think that's probably just because the political utility of covid is largely over largely so. done yeah yes. yeah so. no he can't really <laughs> blame shit on that right yeah, now right yeah but we can talk but, about those jobs reports yep you see that sexy sexy unemployment rate cow yeah see those sexy sexy gas prices <laughs> i was talking about jobs though yeah i don't care we're all employed <laughs> yeah, but for how long? long yeah We'll see. Yeah. That's the He's nice thing about the law. Whether the economy's up or down or whatever, oh. people always need lawyers. Dude, wait, welcome to slinging pills. Yeah. I am recession proof. Yep. Indeed. Everybody's safe here. Well, I'm probably most vulnerable, which is. I don't know. I'd be renegotiating your contract, bruh. What's that? 
I'd be renegotiating my contract. Take Jim in as uh, as your lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. As your agent. We'll do some negotiations. We can never stand up to teachers. Isn't there like, I I was reading a Des Moines Register where there was like 500 teachers out of Des Moines school district leaving. Yep. Yep. I don't know if they were leaving the just the district or the profession, but like. It's. Like crisis level. Resignations or. Um retirees so a resignation could just be moving to a different school district but yeah i saw that too that was crazy yeah big numbers <laughs> too big i don't know and how so i don't know like in any other sector that isn't a public school system like how, how does the public school system absorb that cost yeah. because then you got to increase what Rob you're paying tax, people probably or, yeah, or pay, pay people yeah. more yeah yeah. Just to try to get somebody. Well, that's a that's a legitimate concern. The uh, you know, and I think we'll probably hit rural school districts harder uh, oh, yeah. if you can't yeah. fill like math and science. You then you can't you know hit yeah, the standards. Can't hit, hit the standards, and the education quality starts to wane. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. scary. Because you know who who would unpack those standards in those areas where not not just anybody can do it. Yeah. You need to meet for about seven years and daily for three hours a day. Just keep unpacking. I By ju- the time we got them unpacked, I just I'm, start. You just need to start demanding some like really fringe benefits so that they can keep off your payroll book. Yeah, like get a company car get first and foremost. Own. <laughs> company car. You're gonna yeah. need a company car. Company car. Gonna need. To you, gotta, teach about you need a per diem. Lunch. You got free lunch. Oh, yeah. Of lunch ladies. Demand yeah. more than twenty minutes to eat lunch. Yeah, that's a, that's too much. Can't ask for more. <laughs> yeah. than twenty minute lunch. Freaking ridiculous. I like so. I usually take a full hour, but there it often it's more like an hour fifteen, yeah, ninety minutes, kind of whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My my one tomorrow, I got a haircut at the last half at, at oh yeah the last part of, after my lunch. Yep. Then I'll go to the haircut, so it'll be a solid ninety minute. Yeah. Yep. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta get your haircut. That's right. Well, I got a fence video to show you guys. It's kind of an old story, but it's interesting. We've all heard the saying, but if you ask one upstate man whether good fences do, in fact, make good neighbors, the answer would be no. New at 6 tonight, News Force Keisha Foster on why a newly built fence has a Greenville County homeowner furious. <laughs> Obviously, it's... it's, it's Look at that thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the title of the video is 15 foot fence infuriates neighbors. And this is what you're looking at here is actually two fences. The so, old fence and the extended up. Well, so right? I think it's uh, fences uh, like, you know, there's two act two oh, there's separate like a fences. lane. So like, like a lane in between? I think yeah, so I think there's maybe a couple inches in between. So Which might be the pro- must be the property. Probably line. yeah. So like this <laughs> this fence belongs to the homeowner and then this guy over here in the White House Decided to awesome. build his own and made built, built that wall. wall ten feet taller. Yeah. <laughs> That's spectacular, yeah. man. So wait till we get into the facts. Yeah, the, the fence is it's it's way too high. Um, it it blocks the light coming into our sunroom. Homeowner Dustin Earnhardt no longer likes the view from his backyard on Britain Way. In- <laughs> look at that! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him. <laughs> Oh, this guy like a city ordinance or something. So here's my proposal. Kyle, you need a 15-foot fence around your whole yard. <laughs> so Alan cannot see in. Alan can't see in. Neither can Shannon. That'd be awesome. It'd be like a compound. And then you wouldn't have to zoom in for podcasts because if Hudson got out of bed, it's not like he's getting out of your yard. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Just let that's him go. Right. Scale that 15-foot monster. Yeah. You can make it out of <laughs> Trump slats. Yeah. The unclimbable. Right. 
Yeah, even if he had like a grappling hook and you know a Batman's utility belt, he still wouldn't be getting yep. out of there. Yeah. Greenville County. It's just really a shame that that they would put something like that up that could affect someone else's life. Earnhardt is talking about the 15-foot fence a neighbor recently put up. It's awful. The the view from inside our house is completely blocked. Um, we have we have no ambiance inside um, this sunroom that we have on the back of the house. Uh, it, it's pretty much useless now. Uh, this so, guy's a little wiener. Yeah. Like, you come at me with that argument. Yeah. <laughs> well, so when I listened to this, I thought that was a little hyperbolic. So like, no, there's no ambiance in our three seasons. Around I need, when I, need ambiance. Now that our room is like totally useless. Well, come on, dude. Like, the, the sun's higher than 15 yeah. feet. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why the hell is this even a story? <laughs> Look how many right. it's it's, my property rights. It's got 810,000 views. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a story. <laughs> it's a huge well, story, okay? Huge. So, all right, get this. Uh, an entire portion of our house now we, we can't use. Earnhardt and his wife moved to this home nearly a year ago. He says after living there for several months, they became frustrated with the neighbor's dogs continuously barking at night. And so myself, in conjunction with uh, several of our other neighbors, um, called Animal Control. In August and in January, Earnhardt says he and some other neighbors sent letters of complaint to the Greenville County Animal Control. I believe the fence was put up out of spite. Um, oh, no shit. No, yeah, yeah, it totally was, man. <laughs> so what we don't learn in this video, which was so critical here, is how bad actually was the barking. You Correct. know. Correct. Yeah. Because I could see this going up if it's like, you know, the occasional bark or whatever, and you've got these eggshell right. skull neighbors that are... And this guy seems like that he, type. Yeah, he seems he like seems that the type. type. Yeah, <laughs> Can you tell your dog to kill animal control? You know? I can't have a son in my sunroom. Yeah. What a douche. Oh, dear. So, but then again, I mean, if the guy's dogs are just freaking out 24-7 all night long. That would be awful. Then that would be awful. So That would be awful. I'm, I've never lived with that, but, like, have had cousins who've had oh, yeah. the barky dog in the neighborhood. And, like, I don't know how the people... I can I can never tune that out. We have a lady who comes through the store, and I can hear her dog when it's three cars back in the yeah. drive-thru. Yeah. And then I ran into him at Fairway. That dog's sitting there barking two rows over when I when I pulled in, and I yeah. knew who it was. <laughs> like, yeah, because she's just sitting there in the car with the dog. Yeah. Assumedly, just barking away. Constantly. Yeah. Living oh my with that God. your whole life. Yeah, I don't know, man. Dogs. Good grief. Yeah, they're... Uh, My dog doesn't getting... bark. She barks like two times. That's nice. Yep. Kyle's dog, your your dog's pretty good. Yeah, she's just annoying sometimes. She doesn't really have a bark. It's more of a... Mine whines. So... Yeah. yeah. Well, in my view, dog ownership is all about getting the dog... The appropriate size dog for your living situation. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, obviously a little dog in a big house has got a better life than a big, huge dog in a two bedroom st apartment. Yeah, a studio apartment somewhere. <laughs> oh, I got my St. Bernard. I'm going to go move into my, <laughs> you know, 500 foot square foot apartment God. somewhere. You know, I was thinking miserable. About, I was thinking about apartments the other day. I just can't imagine going back to like apartment living. Oh, I couldn't do it. I got so much crap. I can't. I'd, yeah. yeah. I'd need to pull a Stevo and rent like four of the apartments. <laughs> that just take the, the walls the down build, in between yeah, them. <laughs> take the walls down. <laughs> oh, man, that was a funny. That's He's got some funny tape from inside yeah. that. Like. Well, a lot of it's deranged, but oh, like yeah. when he's going off on a coke fueled bender and yep. like broke through to the guy's room who hates him. <laughs> 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 then I think he went to jail with a bunch of coke oh, in yeah. his pocket. Steve O had a rough tear from he's about sober now. Yeah. Like long sober, like ten years yeah. or something like that. The new jackass was funny. I didn't see it. I laughed. Oh, 
uh, laughed quite a bit. Yeah. At it. Yep. Nice. Well, Jackass and like Viva La Bam and some of that stuff, very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. No Bam. Good old days. Bam yeah. didn't get to be in for. But well, now he's like 90 days sober or something Okay, like that. well, good. Yeah, and Novak's like 15 years yeah. or something. The one guy you thought would never get sober. Thought he'd die for yeah. sure. <laughs> Novak. Was Viva La Bam, was that, um, was that the show where Bam would always mess with his dad? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And okay. his uncle, uh, yeah. Don Vito. Don Vito. <laughs> <laughs> Don Vito. <laughs> Well, that, that show was, I mean, that, so that stuff was so popular back then. I'm pretty sure they gave Bam some huge budget for every episode, like several hundred thousand dollars Crazy or something money. like that. Like, oh, here's yeah. here's $300,000. That's your ep- budget per episode of what <laughs> crazy stuff to do, you know. Uh, where it's just slapping his dad. Well, yeah, I mean, but he like had a civil war at his... Oh yeah, house and did like I'm trying to think of some other stuff. He, well, but. But then he like he concreted out it and made a a half pipe out of his whole driveway. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Like the snake half pipe driveway, built that house that looks like a castle. Mm-hmm. And then they had like a demo derby out there. They went and bought a bunch of cars and just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then and I think he made a lot of money then on like on royalties and stuff. Like, I think he was pretty business savvy about mm-hmm. the deals. Uh, but now I think he's completely broke. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, he had a, well, he had that mental break. Right. And then he like wanted, did you watch the Dr. Phil? He, he I saw clips of that. Yeah. I watched that, that interview and he is, he's not in his right mind. Yeah. Like he is totally speed junkied out. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's too too bad, but I think he really fell off the wagon once uh, Ryan Dunn died. Yes. Yeah. Like that just totally. Which was a drunken, right? Drunken yeah. Porsche off the side of a cliff right. into the woods or Going something. Going like 100 miles an hour, yeah. Just explode. But that Ryan Dunn was pretty wild and crazy too, so yeah. All right. This one is a... Uh, so, We've all seen Saturday Night Live, obviously. Unfortunately. Yeah. I I mean, I would argue it probably hasn't really been funny for at least a decade-ish. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the golden years were two decades ago. Yeah, right. Like Like Cass in 93 was... 93 is when they fired Farley and uh, Spade, I think. Yeah. But it was yeah. like Sandler, Spade, Mark, Mike Myers. Yeah. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Those are some superstars. So, yeah. Yeah. You had an unbelievable star-studded cast 20, 25 years ago. And now we got Keenan and Kel on there. Yeah. Kel. It's just, I don't know. I I honestly, I haven't watched Saturday, like, actually watched Saturday Night Live for years. No. I'd watch, I'll watch the cold open a lot. Um, especially when it was all the politics and stuff, mm. they had some really funny stuff. Okay. But I don't remember when I, last time I actually like watched the whole show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, this was a skit that I did see recently, which I feel personally attacked after this. Oh no. Oh no. Hopefully we don't get copyright striked on this one. Let's see. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, it's not going to be the same working here without you, Phil. Nah, I'm going to miss you guys. Uh, truly sucks you're getting fired just because people can't take jokes anymore. I guess I should. Whoop. There we go. <laughs> you're so right. To- Start this over. <laughs> Listen, guys, I don't know what's in this, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> Alpha brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Cal? What the hell happened to yeah, my thing? Kinda, that kind of hurt a little bit. Not yeah. Hard. But, no, that's funny. Recognize good humor when you hear it. Oh, yeah. 
Yep, you got to be able to laugh a little. So, I got a Shaq video. That oh, Shaq's the man. Like. Yeah, this is kind of an old story. You guys might remember it, but it's not very PC, so. You ready? Talk about... Sp- Oh, it's called Shaq Makes Fun of a Disabled Guy. Oh. A Madison Heights man getting this. unwanted attention online from celebrities. Shaquille O'Neal is known as a jokester, but Jamal Binion wasn't laughing when he saw the former NBA star making fun of his appearance on Instagram. Fox 2's Randy Wimbley with that story. Hardly any of us think twice when we post a selfie on Facebook, and neither did Jamel Binion. But once he did, he became the butt of jokes, and because the picture was online, thousands of people were laughing. We all, to some degree, know what it feels like to be different, but Jamel Binion knows that feeling better than most. <laughs> I wore a rare disorder it's called ectodermal dysplasia. It keeps him from sweating, his hair from growing, and his teeth from fully forming. Like, I've been getting keys since I was like gay tall. People will laugh at me, stare at me. But a lifetime of bullying could not prepare Jamel for this. People was coming to me, they was telling me, like, yo, you got a picture. Shaq posted a picture with you. So, yeah, they actually show the picture of Shaq. <laughs> So what's funnier is not so much the story, it's the fact that, like, the news broadcasts the thing, the 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 offensive picture. (laughs) The caption. (laughs) 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 Shaq. Come on, Shaq. Come on, man. <laughs> what do you think, Kyle? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's rough. Like, I'll go four championships. 16 kids. <laughs> 16 the thing kids. is, Shaq probably doesn't give a F. Yeah. I wouldn't care either. I'm a cop yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. yeah. Oh Smile God. today. The unflattering pic on the Shaquille O'Neal Instagram account <laughs> earned more than 14,000. They do the slow zoom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just for added emphasis. Come on. <laughs> Some of this, Fox 2, you've got some blood on your hands on this one. And likes and more than 400 comments. I always kind of hurt. Cause y'all look up to him, you know, I watch Shaq play basketball. His whole season, so I'm like, why he making fun? Oh, how could you do that to this poor guy, Shaq? Oh, well. Can't take it as, nah, I don't know. Go ahead, finish your thought. Good. Take it as a compliment. He hey, noticed me. That's something to be said for that, perhaps. I became Man. a Shaq fan in probably 1993, I want to say, about yeah. second grade ish. So what was that? That was the Orlando years. Yes. So yeah. yeah, he got drafted in '92. Okay. And I was a big Orlando Magic Shaq fan. Yep. And I was torqued when he went to the Lakers. Yep. Actually. But then I got over it once he started winning. I w- the year he went to the Lakers, I went to a game in Orlando. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So Penny was still on the team, but they were. My big deal was they were playing against the Hornets. Oh, yeah. It was my team, yeah. yes. and so I got to see Alonzo Mourning and Muggsy. Muggsy was still on the team. Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Yeah. The big the big unit. Right. Big man. Those are got... those are cool teams. Great teams. Nineties teams. Nineties teams are awesome, yeah. Nineties Nineties NBA awesome. basketball is legit. Yeah. Well and I miss this those style of uniforms too. I really wish they would bring yeah. back the retro like Hornets uniform was awesome. Mm-hmm. I like the logo. Orlando Magic, Magic was, was killer. Cool. Yep. Um I guess the Bulls are kind of the same still. Bulls are kind of the same. Yeah. The Bulls are sweet. The Jazz, I always yeah. thought had kind of cool uniforms. Yes, Jazz. Denver Nuggets were not bad either. Carmelo. Yeah. 
Carl Malone. Carl Malone. Malone Stockton. Yep. Uh, speaking of SNL, though, they did have a f- <laughs> was it SNL or Mad TV that had the Carl Malone skits? I think that was. I think it might have been Mad, Mad TV. TV. Yeah, one of, one of those two. <laughs> Cracked me up. Yes. He just he was a big dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Carl Malone say. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> well, I know Aries Spears used to do all the impressions of the basketball players on Mad TV. Aries Spears. Remember that guy? I don't think I do. He's pretty funny. I have to Google him up. Yeah. Mad TV is a weird thing, man. Uh, I watch... Well... Then I got into Howard Stern. Mm. I went on a big Howard Stern bender, but Stern. Artie Lang used to be on Mad yes. TV. And ta- you want to talk about listening to degenerate stories? You listen to old Artie Lang. Artie Lang's heroin and cocaine yeah. and gambling addict. Yeah, alcoholic. he's lived 10 lifetimes in one, I think. Have you seen him in the last 10 years? Yeah, well, his nose is like completely flat. Yeah. Yep. Because he used to have kind of a beak, He's, and now it's just, you know... All... He claims it's from snorting uh, crushed glass, like powdered glass, thinking it was cocaine. But, Jeez. like, the word is he just got beat for not paying his... The drug money, Either yeah. drug or betting, because yeah. he's a degenerate gambler as well. Yeah. The worst than Kyle. I mean... Uh, yeah. my uh, You should see my DraftKings account. It's non-existent, so... All done. All done. Yep. Can't do it. He, uh, this guy, like, bet with bookies in Jersey. Oh, yeah. That's that kind of game. That's, a, that's huh? a different level. Yeah. That's hardcore. <laughs> and you're betting on the Giants, then. Who wants oh, to boy. do that? Yeah. <laughs> a bookie. You know, I'm sure that kind of stuff exists in our neck of the woods, too. But I. I've never heard never of it. Never heard of it. No idea where to look, what who to talk to, you know. And I feel like we would. I yeah. feel like you'd at least have an inkling like, oh, yeah, that guy takes blood yeah. for NFL or something right. like that. Yeah. Well, but, with the, the online stuff, you don't need it anymore. True. Yeah, yeah not anymore. Yeah. Well, and then that's, that's all pay up front, you know. Right. Yeah. That's... Whereas a bookie, I think you place the bet and you don't pay them unless they win and they don't pay you unless they win. Mm-hmm. So right. I think it's a, a little different. Yeah. <sighs> a lot more broken ankles. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah, <for sure>. yeah. <laughs> oh, Shaq. How can you do it? <laughs> well, we haven't checked in with our guy, Mike X, for a while. You remember him? Mike X. Sounds familiar, but I don't uh, know. You, I'll remember. You got one once you see it, you'll remember. Yeah, Mike this X. guy. No. <laughs> Start from the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the skater guy. He's like. Why seven. following your heart is the real path to wealth. <laughs> to find New I am about to tell you how you can get better at almost everything in life that matters. How you can make better decisions that lead you to more successful outcomes, including making more money. How you can increase your emotional intelligence, enabling you to manage. He looks like a cult leader, right? Well, yeah. so the, <laughs> the wardrobe has changed a little, too. Yep. Because now he's got like a Henley on. And so, okay. I thought of this when I first watched this. So it's not like I can criticize him too much, but... You know, when you've got the dad bod going on, like usually you don't wear the, the slim the, cut. The slim cut, the form fitting type of stuff is not always the most flattering. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. So give your, give that Tom a little room to breathe. Right. Man. Your own emotions more effectively, and understand the emotions and motivations of others more deeply, so that you can take relationships to a new level. And I'm talking about personal romantic relationships as well as work relationships. Now, I know I'm promising a lot, but I will deliver. You're gonna like this. I'm pretty excited about this particular topic. It's based on an area of research and psychology. God, this dude, he looks like a corpse or something. Yeah, you know? you're right. It's, it's that, like he, he looks like, you know who he looks like is uh, 
<clears throat> Heaven's Gate cult. Applewhite. Oh. That guy. Yeah. They were the ones that drank the Kool-Aid thinking yeah. they could get the alien spaceship behind the hale Bop comet. Right. In about 94? Yeah. Ish, 94, 95. So I guess this is a shoe tangent. Yeah. But the Heaven's Gate Nikes mm-hmm. are like pretty exclusive. You can't get them anymore. Can't get them anymore. Can't find them. Yeah, because they all had the same sneaks on it. It was just some like kind of run of the mill, generic, generic, shitty Nike runner, essentially (laughs) like a fifty dollar runner. Yeah, but But it was just like black and then white, white, white white swoosh. swoosh. Yeah, but they stopped making them then because they're like, oh, this is a cult shoe. (laughs) But then it made a a cult cult following, (laughs) (laughs) cultception (laughs) occurred. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think you could get them. They're not, you know, they're not going to run the, like the Freddy Krueger dunks mm-hmm. or something. Those things are like 50 grand Oof. now. <laughs> I was watching, there was a big shoe, shoe con was this weekend, I think. So I was watching a bit, whole big thing on uh, shoe con. what the, the sneaker was this year. And it was the Louis Vuitton Air Force One oh, okay. that sold for... Three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Pair of sneakers. Dead stock though, Kyle. That OG, is OG all. Gotta have the yeah, OG right. laces. Dead stock is important. I don't know what any of that means. Just rock my Nike Monarchs. Yeah, the Air Monarchs are comfort, <laughs> man. They're wide, extra yep. wide. <laughs> Can get them in, you know, quadruple E if you have to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll never forget him trying to talk me into getting New Balance, the three forty threes or whatever, yes. the classic dad New Balance, because right. it's the only shoe I can find that's in extra, extra, extra wide, and I got a wide foot. I'm like, don't so size up. Yeah, go to the thirteen and a half, go to a fourteen, <laughs> and you'll have plenty of room for your fat ass feet. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Some new balances are not bad though. I I like actually, some of the colorways. I actually they, like the brand. They've been doing I've never had a pair. Yeah. Um I've heard I hear they're nice. Yeah. Shoes. I've owned a couple of the four seventy fours, which is sort of the eighties style. Is that more like cut? The everyday shoe yeah, kind of it's thing. Uh, yeah. It's not the not the dad <laughs> the dad trainer. The dad trainer that either All comes trade. in like all white with a with navy trim yep. or just yeah. totally murdered out <laughs> yep. one or the other yeah. i think trigger used to rock the murdered out ones. yeah he's an yep. extra extra wide man <laughs> yep. old wolf i ran into him at <laughs> me and the wife are at ace i ran into him and jeremy oh boy. they oh were in God. there for a project and i said hi to him and i'm talking to these mountains and she <laughs> go back over to megan dudes. and she's like who are they? <laughs> like, those are the, the you know mythical trugs yep. of Esterville. There'd be giant blood in those yeah. boys. Yep, they're big dudes. Oh dear, Mike X. Psychology and neuroscience that's exploding right now. And there's a good chance this will be the first time you've heard someone talk about it. All right, let's. Ah! All right. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, dude, this is corpse makeup. Yeah. So yeah. when you have a dead person, we need to have Adam on to talk about this. But like when they're laying in the casket and you're going to get the family in to look at them and stuff, they powder them up so they look like they're kind of <laughs> somewhat, you know, just asleep or whatever. But and what's the reason for th- Like, I I get it, but the is it the blood drained? Or why the excessive amounts of powder? Because yeah, you'd think the skin would dry out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how dead bodies work. We gotta yeah, have Adam on. We do. Yeah, have a dead body show. Well, I know with a dead body, if there's blood in it, still gravity just you know yeah. pulls it all to the back, and then you get sure. kind of like discolorations, and you know you'll be like super pale in your face maybe and then you know look like you're all bruised, bruised in up back. in the back yeah, yeah it makes sense to me 
but obviously when you prepare a body for a viewing you drain all the blood and the other fluid and stuff and you replace it with formaldehyde or whatever, whatever it they is. Do. Yeah, I don't know. So, but do you like run that through the whole vasculature? I think so. I okay. thought Okay. So they like hook it up to a big artery or something yeah. like a central line and then just start f- f- pumping. Yeah. And then put a cork in it. Yeah, do you remember what Kyle and I had Adam run us through the whole process start to finish one time? interesting and yeah he was telling us all about it and uh yeah. it's pretty gnarly like they you know put basically yeah. hook you up to like a sump pump or something and you know out it goes and then in comes the new Wild. stuff and yeah so like so there's, there's new fluid in the body yep. but it's the type of fluid that's not going to be subject to decay at the same rate as organic right. material that's the whole idea so then I think that way they can still manipulate the body a little bit because uh, what's that called? Rigor mortis? Is that the yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So, I don't know. Maybe they can kind of massage the muscles and move an arm a little bit or whatever. Keep you from, okay. you know, so it's yeah, because that's the thing. It'd be the muscles because there's no there's no calcium going across yeah. the muscles. So you can't contract them right and such but you got to move them so that you know so the hands can be here yeah right exactly so but but i still think a corpse would be very like pasty looking i suppose if they didn't put makeup on it sure and i understand the makeup thing well and that's i mean that's probably is them colored up a little bit with makeup yeah they always all look so I don't know. I've never been to young. I've never like viewed young bodies. Yeah. It's my, I, if I've gone to a visitation and done a viewing, it's been an older, older individual. Yeah. Well, and there's, so there's a technique too, cause corpses obviously get like slack jaw and stuff like that. So you know, nobody wants to go to grandpa's funeral and they're just like, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So wired up. Yeah. So they like, you know, go in through the nostril or something like that and, you know, run some 50 pound test around a couple of times, man, tighten her up and then, you know, tie it, tie it off. And I'm glad, I'm glad there's someone to do it. I just, I I don't think I, Oh, I I wouldn't have the stomach for that. No, I watched it back in the golden years of YouTube. I watched an autopsy one time on YouTube from start to finish. <laughs> yeah. And it was a struggle to get through kind of, but then after a while I was just sort of like desensitized to it. Sure. And, and I've, I've watched surgeries. I guess that's kind of, that's kind of gnarly. Yeah. Cause things are moving there. So like you can see muscle. The, I've watched abdominal surgeries. Yeah. And so you'll see like, quiverings and the intestines oh, moving yep. stuff through and stuff and she's like oh yeah there's their spleen okay that's cool i guess the one i watched they went down the torso mm-hmm. with a couple of incisions and then this person you Opened know to flap well it was yeah they had so they had like subcutaneous fat you know along their before they got to the rectus abdominis sure. or whatever you know yeah. and all that. but they were slicing it in and then, then they're popping ribs with a like a bolt cutter mm-hmm. <laughs> they get the chest cavity open and stuff and they're going through and the they'll organs. take a clamp or like a vice i guess to hold it open yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it was quite a procedure and it, it you know it almost it felt like is this even real but it was absolutely you know but he can't find that stuff on youtube anymore no <laughs> no no figure <laughs> Goddamn nerf. Probably, probably a good thing nerf in the world i know it <laughs> well you know there's a lot to learn from there is and from a cadaver i mean oh yeah that was a thing isn't there some pretty interesting history in the like history oh. of medicine about having yeah. to, you know, the grave robbers and all of that, yeah, you know, to go to steal a corpse and stuff. Well, I th- and yeah, and I think like some like old scientists would pay grave robber, like yeah. they wouldn't go dig them up, but they'd pay some dude to go grab a body so that they could weigh the weigh the liver, right, to figure out. <laughs> 
Well, and in some ways, thank goodness they did because that's where, yeah. where we got today. You know, well, yeah. you know, it's you, unethical to do that same thing to someone who's alive. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. I'm take all my organs, donate them out, <laughs> divvy yeah. them up. Kyle, you want something? Well, you're on a short list now, Spurge. The government's going to come. It's on my driver's people. license. Yeah. Like, take them. <laughs> They're not going to harvest me. We'll 3D print stuff before there's organ yeah. harvesting. Well, they're not going to try real hard to resuscitate you. Then. Well, well they already know. have. The University of Iowa, when I was there, was 3D printing uh, stem cells onto a collagen scaffolding in a mouse's brain. Wow. And they were just working. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Stem cells are crazy. Yep, I could use an injection. Oh, yeah. My X. His teeth look a little blue, too. Well, oh, my God. So, I mean, Trump hair. Yep. He's got the orange hue, too, a little bit. Children of the corn type eyes. This is lipstick, for sure. I don't it's think gotta I, be, right? Otherwise, otherwise, he is not, like, getting enough oxygen. Yeah. yeah he's otherwise, not, he's well. cyanotic. Yeah. <laughs> like hypothermia or something. But and then, like, maybe veneers or bleached teeth or something. Could be the veneers. Yeah. Let's dive in. You know how some people, when they see someone make a mistake, they'll get all condescending yeah, things, and say, those are, those are What are you doing? Yeah. Use your head. Yeah, veneers are... There was an interesting, uh, uh, I don't know if it was a podcast or just like a, a commentary YouTube thing I watched after the, it was either a primary debate or a presidential debate or something, or they just went through like all the politicians in that season. And it was the Hillary Trump campaign year. Yeah. And, uh, and they're looking at every single person on there and it was with a, a cosmetic dental right. surgeon. A cosmetic or oral surgeon. Yes. And he's sitting there like poking out like, yes, Marco Rubio has had X, Y, and Z done. But if you look at his teeth compared to Trump's teeth, like Trump's had the freaking Cadillac. Oh, yeah. Because they don't look fake. Yep. Like they look perfect, but they don't look fake. They have mm -hmm. like a little imperfection. So you think that they're not, but they are. Right. Super interesting thing. Because huh. I never thought to you, I don't really look at teeth unless right. they're like, ah, teeth. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, huh. another thing I couldn't do. I don't like people's mouths. Yeah. Dentistry would not be something I would be too into. No. Well, it turns out that that advice to use your head is pretty much the worst advice anyone can give you. <laughs> worst oh advice. God. Use your Thank head. You. <laughs> worst advice. This is why one of Tony Robbins' favorite catchphrases is, get in your head and you're dead. When we make decisions. <laughs> Tony Robbins. Is How is that true. a thing? So he. <laughs> what are we advocating for exactly oh, here? Not thinking. Yes. You guys know. Have you seen Tony Robbins' stuff? I'm only like, I've got like a cursory, vague oh. familiarity with his. I mean, Man. I know he's, he's this guy. I mean. Tony Robbins, I think, is what Mike X aspires to be. Yeah. Is he a business it's, motivational speaker? Kind of, yeah. It's just, it's super interesting. There's like a behind the scenes, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on like documentary or something of like how he goes about his day to day stuff. It's weird. It's culty, very culty. But, you know, you have all these middle aged women in the is audience. It, is it just, an MLM? No, he's he just well, it's probably an MLM for him. Like, he's just selling books and yeah, books he's just and speeches, himself. probably. And yeah. kind of, I mean, he's sort would be sort of like a musical act almost in some way, yeah. you know, touring around, probably speaking engagements, dude. The, yeah. the life selling merch, the life, man. Yeah, maybe yep. this is the angle we need. We obviously are sucking at coming up with their own multi-level marketing scams so <laughs> guru well didn't we Vince be... say we should be gurus yeah he did say something about that he was bringing up some like internet guru guys yes 
I've seen a bunch of like in real estate people on different Instagram stories, Facebook reels talking about how to like Grant Cordone. You ever heard of Cordone Capital? Mm -mm. He's this investor, but he's also like a Tony Robbins type. Like he'll come talk and his whole thing is to essentially leverage yourself 10 X. So take what you have <laughs> and owe 10 times that amount. Oh my God. <laughs> to no, cre- thank you. To, cre- to create wealth. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's cringy. <laughs> Debts shall set you free. Yeah. It's wow. Essentially it. He's like, you know, if you have if you have ten thousand, so you borrow a hundred K. Right. And then and then you know you put your ten thousand in, so then you can leverage that on your next loan. Yep. And essentially just chain daisy chain loans. Yeah. And then out. wait for it to collapse and file bankruptcy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the, you know, when you were talking there, Andy, this just popped in my head. All these gurus, at least the ones I've seen, are all like, check out my Lamborghini. Here I am. I'm an alpha male, you know, all yep. this other stuff. Maybe the because the whole the book on the millennial is they can't afford to move out of their parents' house because they got four hundred thousand dollars of student loans and for an and, arts you know for an arts degree and all this yeah. other stuff. But we're all homeowners, you know. We could yeah. be like, hey, check us out. We got this like run of the mill middle class lifestyle <laughs> for the low low price of you know 25 bucks a month we'll tell you our secrets <laughs> our secret move to northwest iowa take a nine to five better, okay. <laughs> <You> know, like... <laughs> <laughs> grocery shop once a week yeah. <laughs> hit up the coupon section of the shopper it's Switch from fair, high V to fairway. Yeah. <laughs> See what's on sale. <laughs> Don't buy that nine dollar uh, venti latte from Starbucks every well, day. Well, no, you, you, you can do that. <laughs> you don't want the seventeen dollar. Ah, <laughs> right. The double double. I've I've kind of had to quit drinking coffee. Really? Yeah, battling the old reflux here lately. The oh, that's ba- that's yeah. bad for the reflux. Yeah, caffeine is. I'm feeling it out though. Co- tr- coffee is a little rough on it, but uh, the uh, I've tried some tea, tried like cold brew coffee, a few other things. Okay. Some days are better, you know. Sometimes it hits me pretty hard, and then other times not so much. But. Megan, our dear friend over at the lakes. The witch doctor Mm -hmm. has a really excellent tea that I bought that I drink cold sometimes. Okay. It's a, it's Boji bliss. Boji bliss. Boji bliss. And it's a green, it's a green tea. Okay. Uh, my, I don't know. It's got some, something sweet in it, but she doesn't use sweeteners or stuff. So it's all, all the natural. Nice. Getting a little energy boost, but just a good taste too. Yeah or interact with other people based only on rational, logical, linear thinking without taking into account what we feel in our bodies, we generally get pretty shitty results. There's a mountain of peer reviewed research that proves this fact. Our bodies know better than our brains. And the better we- (laughs) Is that really the scientific conclusion (laughs) that the research there is, there's there's tons of research to say that that the body knows better than the brain. <laughs> yeah, that kidney's telling you something. Well, you know? what's he mean by that exactly? I, it, it's, so if it's if some new agey like, how do you feel right about this decision for your business? Yeah. I'm Does guessing. it give you a stomach ache? Yeah. Is that what he's getting at? Yeah. Like you get like that pit in your stomach. Even though your brain's like, oh well, this is a clearly, clearly a, the next the next move, like the good thing to do. Yeah. Well, Andy, you're an entrepreneur. Were you nervous when you opened the pharmacy? I was. Yeah. I mean, I was in a great position because it was, I was sweat equity. 
Uh huh. So I knew I just had to do the, do my job. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but I had a lot of nerves because a lot of other people's money was right betting on me. Sure. Essentially. Um. But I also knew that that there was plenty of business in a size this town town this right. size to gobble up exactly and uh and i knew of inefficiencies at at my previous job that we mm-hmm. could improve upon and and do a little differently that would yeah the numbers made sense yeah so what did your body tell you about <laughs> opening the pharmacy the body <laughs> said I, I don't know man i this is <laughs> this is too hippy dippy for me <laughs> I'm, I'm not understanding like what <laughs> my <laughs> Mike X's position here is well maybe I, he'll still I, elaborate well, I a hope bit. he tells us like how do you interpret yeah what the body's saying we are at sensing what's going well this is a 30 minute soliloquy here on oh, goodness yeah going on in our bodies the better we are at pretty much everything That's including <laughs> reasoning and rational decision making things that seem oh, right like the they're hole. purely about right thinking the clearly colon. now let me guess what you're thinking uh mike i make decisions and do pretty much everything else in my life with my mind and i'm pretty sure my mind is located inside my brain which is contained entirely by my skull my body's role is to carry my brain around and to connect it to the outside world. My body's not here to make decisions or analyze emotions. It's here to talk and eat and walk around and have sex and drive a car and occasionally exercise. This guy not- fucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But he probably has to pay for it. <laughs> There's some weird things. <laughs> Look at the well, palms of his hand. There has oh, to be like a yeah. blue light filter or Whoa. something. Yeah, like there's Let- some weird <laughs> discoloration stuff. Compare going that on. to the skin tone on the on the neck. Yes. <laughs> oh my. It's like is my. It's like I got one of those old TVs and I got like the contrast yeah. and the yeah. the hue all wrong and I got to adjust the dial, turn them into the Incredible Goodness. Hulk or something. Not to make decisions. Well, that is a very reasonable point of view. In fact, I think it's fair to say that most people in the world, including a lot of highly educated, successful, intelligent human beings, think about the brain-body relationship like that. And that's the way it's been since over 400 years ago, when a French philosopher named Rene Descartes declared that the mind- I think, yeah. Yep, I, I think, think therefore, therefore I am. I am. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, dude. This guy is creepy. I'm not sure I want to invest the kind of time necessary. So we got 29,000 views (laughs) since New Year's or so. Yeah. Damn, bro. Who's watching this stuff? I mean, obviously we're making fun of it, but like, who's sitting there like, yeah, Mike, this is... This is really resonating with me. I really need to stop thinking. (laughs) Yeah, my stupid brain is just ruining my life. If I listen to my ass a little bit more, I'd probably be way more successful. (laughs) God damn. Oh, jeez. So there's a Gale video I got to show you guys. You ready to move on? Yeah, what's she been doing? Oh, man, we got to check. Because Trump's not in office right now. Well... She probably is she a believer he's still running it? Gail Gail is the Emperor Empress Gail, remember? She's in charge of everything. Yeah, but wasn't Donald Trump telling her stuff? Oh yeah. So okay. There was a good one. Yeah. So this one's called Brent did what he had to had to do. Oh, no. This is about data guy. Right? Oh, this so I I li- I listened to four minutes of this earlier this afternoon and it's horrible. So Hang on your butts. Let me go ahead and read a letter written by my husband, Brent Spiner. So Brent Spiner, for those who can't remember. <laughs> Dad on Star played Trek. Played Dad on Star right. Trek. Yes. And Professor Oaken in the... Uh, yes. Um, Independence Day franchise. 
And data yeah. was a computer, right? Yeah. Star Trek, yeah. essentially. Yep. Android or something. Yep, he was an android. I was never really into Star Trek, but... You should, yeah, give it a try. He can still... Unfortunately, they took Voyager and uh, Enterprise off of Netflix. Very disappointing. But uh, you got... Next Gen. Next Gen there. and uh, Deep Space Nine are still up. Right. So, yeah. Dear Scale, I have quite the confession to make. However, to say that I am apologetic or feel any remorse for what I did would be an outright falsehood. I will never apologize for what I just had to do as a man and husband. It all started when I was in my kitchen with Buddha sharing conversation over tea. Lately, we've been... So Brent Spiner was hanging out with Buddha. Buddha. Like the Buddha. Like Buddhism Buddha? Yeah. Like Siddhartha. (laughs) Okay. Siddhartha Buddha. Spending a lot of time getting to know each other. My eyebrows narrowed and my lips pursed. I was lost in thought, staring down into my cup. Buddha seemed to notice I hadn't taken a sip in a long time. What's on your mind, Brent, he asked, sensing my unease. Well, I've just been concerned with the fact that getting butt fucked by Jesus took away. <laughs> what? Gail. What? It gets worse. My free will in regards to Gail sleeping with other men. Ever since I got butt fucked at that sex party on Discord hangout night. I've had no feelings of possessive attachment to Gail and have let her have sex freely with other men. Even when I saw that... So Brent was... At a Discord meetup. At Discord. There was some BFing going on. From Jesus. <laughs> from Jesus. And uh, now he's letting... Re- reflecting on this with... Boom. Yeah. And he was letting Gail get around. And Gail can do what she wants. That her sexual and romantic inclinations had become focused almost entirely on Jesus. I just didn't feel the way a husband should feel about another guy moving in on his wife. I know that a cuck is a guy whose wife sleeps with other men. Does this really make me a cuck? Buddha sipped his tea, calmly listening. Hmm, he wisely considered. This would depend on if this was happening because you mutually decided to have an open relationship with your wife, or if it's because you had no choice but to accept your wife's desires for other men and won't do anything to stop it. That's the thing, I observed, taking another sip of tea. Well, unbuttfucking isn't a difficult process. So I see Buddha offers to un-BF Brent Spiner. (laughs) And then she goes into the description of how this goes. How you un Yeah. However, I can open it by removing the blockage that has been placed there. May I? I nodded, clenching my jaw and preparing to be penetrated. Buddha, rather than butt-fuck me like Jesus, simply separated his hands in a spreading motion as if <laughs> opening me up. A ball of dark energy appeared around my anus, Buddha grabbed the energy ball and yanked, and as he did so, a burst of red glowing light exploded out of my anus. I immediately felt a rush of... What the hell, man? Oh, oh. oh, my God. Gail, you've gone triple X. Holy cow. <laughs> Gail's gone nuts. This is crazy oh. even for Gail. It is. <laughs> this lovely, is way crazier than the... Uh... Wasn't she selling her nudes not too long ago? Well, yeah. She did shave her pubes for Trump, too. (laughs) But, I mean, a usual Gale video is like she's out in the parking lot at her apartment complex, like videotaping uh, jet contrails, you know? Like, oh, yeah, this is a bomb from the Jesuits and stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Because the Jesuits were going (laughs) to. Oh, She's man. got a hard on for those Jesuits, doesn't <laughs> yeah. she? Yep. And Buddha, I think. Are the Jesuits even like a controversial group? 
I thought it's ca- they're Catholics, right? Like scholarly yeah. Catholics. Yeah. Because I think Creighton's a Jesuit college. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Let's look it up quick. But I didn't know. I mean, I think there's way more controversial Catholic groups than the Jesuits. <laughs> the Opus Dei crew. Mm, Opus yeah. Dei. Yeah. Opus Dei. A member of the Society of Jesus, Roman Catholic Order of Priests, founded by St. Ignatius. Loyola. Loyola. Ignatius Fire. Yeah. So, okay, what's the difference between a Jesuit and a Catholic? Remember the Society of Jesus. Yes, okay. yeah. It's Men only. Yeah. Who aren't priests. Okay. Interesting. So it's like a boys club. Yep. Good to know. Oh, Gail. <laughs> but she's not a fan. No, she hates the Jesuits. Well, well and now, well... I don't know. She's her husband's BF and BF and Jesus. Yeah, and then getting unBF by by Buddha. So then it didn't happen. But uh, but exploding it, it, red light out of my anus or whatever. And she that was said. only so that so that he wouldn't be a cuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I oh. guess. Am I following that because <laughs> Gail was getting around, and then I don't know. It didn't make any sense after a while. She's got a pride flag, though, out for Pride Month. Yep, Pride Month. Very good. Circle back to the first subject of the evening. Well, should we do a little education segment situation? Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah. Um, Did you go up to Minneapolis for the parade this year, Kyle? I, no, I didn't. Minneapolis is burned to the ground. Oh, oh it doesn't what exist anymore? Education in- no. Oh, whoops, I played the wrong one. My bad. Here we go. (laughs) It's a collaboration education segment situation. I gotta find the video because I forgot to link it, boys. I'm pretty sure this is going to be my last clip because... Because why? Oh, I'm probably going to get mad, and I'm tired already. You so have to work? Like, I don't think you I, will get mad at this one, actually. Really? I don't think so, because it's all about why teachers are quitting. Oh. So, let me... It's because it they can't teach CRT? <laughs> I think yeah. it's... Uh, let's... Damn it. Kyle, you're in the way. I did want to ask you, Kyle, yeah. how the new Kimmy law impacts your thing. Like, because you guys pretty much had all your curriculum and materials probably on an online portal anyway, right? Um, like that parents can access? Or? Yeah, wasn't there a new education thing done in Iowa where so that all materials that teachers use have to be or can be are available freely to all parents and Mm. not that i know of Mm. news to me i'll have to look it up i might be getting that wrong too i think there was some proposed legislation maybe Mm. i'm not sure if it got anywhere so this good evening my name is lee allen and i'm the 2022 i'll just let him explain it dude good evening my name is lee allen and i'm the 2022 gwinnett county teacher of the year i'm here tonight to speak about teacher retention at the end of this school year i will be leaving gwinnett county schools leaving behind the opportunity to submit for state teacher of the year roughly ten thousand dollars in salary and most importantly the students and colleagues that i've built strong relationships with i'm leaving in hopes that i can regain the ability to do the job that i love I'm speaking tonight to use my small platform to raise awareness on issues facing teachers today so the district can seriously consider a plan, a plan to proactively combat these issues before more learning is lost and more teachers leave. I do not claim to speak for all teachers. However, I have spoken with several teachers across the district and state and have solicited and received feedback online from others. The first issue at hand is student apathy and disrespect for school rules and norms. 
Returning from con concurrent learning, we have an alarming number of students that simply do not care about learning and refuse to even try. We are Is that axiomatic? Yeah, Coming that's... Coming off uh, the pandemic, there... Nobody cares? Yeah, apathy. And I, I wouldn't blame it just on the pandemic, but... Um, we see so much more apathy than actual behavior that it... Uh, um, it's definitely different than what it used to be. Like, there's there's not a whole lot of kids that actually act out anymore. It's just kids who absolutely do not do anything. Oh man! And, they, and that's kind of that's the behavior now. It's not actual, you know, verbal disrespect or anything like that. But, How do you? I mean, so what are the consequences for that? It's failing. I mean, there. Are, I think there are something like twenty some kids in the graduating class this year who didn't graduate. Hmm. Oh, they so, do. So they are being failed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't do anything. I'm not gonna Good. pass it. Good. I, I'm glad about that. At yeah. least. I yeah. mean, not glad it's yeah. happening, but I'm glad right. because I, I just I hear all this crap about how like you can't fail them. No child behind, yeah. left behind, and keep moving yeah. them through. Keep cranking them on through. Yeah. But I, I, you know, there has to be a point where that stops, and I think high school is the logical weed yeah. out. Oh there. yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. We are also experiencing incredible disrespect and refusal to follow basic school rules. There is little to no accountability or expectation for grades or behavior placed on students or parents. Rather than being asked what the student can do to improve their understanding, teachers are expected to somehow do more with less student effort. Next, cell phone use. Teachers cannot possibly compete with the billions of dollars tech companies pour into addicting people to their devices. Phones allow constant communication, often being the spark that fuels fights, drug use, and other inappropriate meetups throughout the day. So what, what's the upside to phones in school? Um, the upside to phones in school is knowing that teachers don't have to police it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's impossible. You can't do it. Um, and what? I don't. So is, the, is it just like, is it parental expectation that the parents would have? Are the kids have a right to the phones because cell phones existed when we were there. Yeah, yeah. But like Cole, think... Cole Beardsley had one; he had right. to keep it in his locker. Yeah. I think if, like, I always tell my kids, if you know how to use your phone appropriately, I don't care if you have it in class. But the kids that are the super apathetic ones, the ones that he's talking about, will just dick around on their phone all day and not mm -hmm. give a crap. And what are you going to do? Are you going to take the phone away? Well, he's not going to do anything then. I mean, it's not going to change anything. So yeah. the kids who, I hate to use the word good kids, but the, the good students know how to have a phone in class and still succeed. So, yeah. When did all that change? That expectation that it was just okay for them to have a cell phone on them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, probably when everybody started to get one, I suppose. Yeah. It's... Sometime when we were in college. When I was tutoring at the high school, the phone policy was like, not supposed to see them. They wouldn't... Go ahead and have them on you. Yeah, you know, but if you pull out your phone and we're looking stuff or whatever, and, and that was, you know, that was the smartphone era. That mm -hmm. was 2010. Okay. You know, yeah. so... Oh, yeah. But, you know, if some kid was talking, called somebody, or obviously blatantly texting somebody or whatever, or looking stuff on the internet or whatever. They'd you pull know, them yeah, to the class. They'd yank the phone, take it away from you, you know, that kind of stuff. So that is, it's eroded from that point, clearly. Right. Oh, yeah. So. To where. It, so is there official policy that isn't followed, or is there just no, like, like do your thing? Yeah, it's kind of up to the teacher in the classroom. Most teachers just, I, if it's a major issue, then obviously we'll intervene. But sure, I mean, there's if you get done with your lesson, there's 10, 15 minutes class left, and feel free. You know, if they're just working on homework or something, I don't care if they plug in music and and do that or whatever on their phone. But because 
every kid's the, got a Chromebook, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's no like research utility or anything like that, that the phone would offer that they couldn't have no. from the, no. from the Chromebook. Correct. Correct. Fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. So really the only thing that the phone is offering them is entertainment slash communication with yep. their friends. Yeah. Social yeah. media. Yeah. And parents and parents. Cause I'd imagine yeah. that's a big pressure too, is that parents want to be able to contact their children. Yep. Yep. And, and have that line of communication. We never did. But... Well, and then, but is that, you know, okay. So that's a desire, but is that necessary? Yeah. Not. I don't think so kid? either. I, I don't mean, think so. You know, I mean, I I don't have kids of that age, so I don't know how I'd feel. But like, how do you decide when? Okay, like Sally, seven seven year old, doesn't need a cell phone at mm-hmm. seven years old, and it's okay that I can't be in constant communication with her. But Freddie fourteen has hit has to ha- has right. to have a cell phone because yeah. I have to be able to tell him. Yeah. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That ar- that argument seems a little flimsy to me. Like, yeah. oh, we've got to stay in constant. I mean, Andy and I are old enough. Kyle, you're probably old enough, too. You'll collect call. Well, you know, exactly. Fake yeah. a collect call. Practice over at the middle school bite. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. You, you go down to the o- If you, you, if you absolutely had to call your mom or something, you go to the office. Trips. Yep. And you'd say, can I use a telephone? I'm going to call my mom. You had to sign out on it, too. And stuff. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't yep. that big of a deal. No. 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 So, if anything, uh, my guess would be like 99% of this, oh, I have to talk to him. It'd just be useless communicate. Like, oh, can you pick me up a sandwich right. after yeah. school? So they, you know, got a sports ball game or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Nonsense like that. That, like five seconds of forward thinking in a previous time could solve the problem, you know, yeah. but, it, but instead, because I've got this comm link with people that I can yeah. <laughs> access at any time, I don't have to think about, you know, it's just whatever the impulse in my head I can. Oh, I can shoot a text you know. off to my kid and be like, Ooh, yeah. Pick up your brother. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd like to see a universe in which phones, you know, every kid walks in and they're like their ticket, their admission ticket to the school building is put their phone in a Rubbermaid tub in the office or something. And then that's your also your way to leave. Well, because I think it'd be, it'd be interesting for me to like go back and see how how does that change social interactions like lunch times or. In between classes, like, are people just head down in their phone yeah. texting and snapping their friends? Or are they, like, talking to their friend who's walking next to them? It's really not as bad as you'd think. Like, and I've noticed that, too. There's there's actually a lot of communication that goes on. If okay. It's, well, that's you know, encouraging. That is encouraging. Yeah. My own anecdotal observation is that people are like physically uncomfortable if they have to just sit for a while and in the same presence and, of somebody well, or just you know like i'm in a waiting room oh, yeah. waiting to go in to see the dentist or something can i just sit here for a few minutes and not think about anything or talk or look at a magazine or what you know mm-hmm. yeah. can i just sit and be a person for 90 seconds people don't like existing. people don't like doing yeah they no. get to pull the phone out and go Oh man, the Life magazine. You gotta find all the little things yeah. in the the hidden dinosaurs or whatever it was. Yeah. Hmm. I you know I love the cell phone for all the reasons it's good. It's you know, the cumulative understanding knowledge of the human species at your fingertips. Yep. I mean there's no excuse to not know something anymore or to be able to look it up. But yeah. but my God. The cost. Yes. <laughs> The social cost. Yeah. I don't think there's just not enough emphasis on that. I don't think. No. I mean, I've tried to not look at it at various points in my life. And I, I get so sucked in at work. Yeah. Like on work at work, I'm constantly on my phone for my emails Mm -hmm. to free up my computer browser for the, for like, I just don't have enough screens yeah. because I'm expected to 
have that email, have four email accounts open at the same time. Right. Have my drug information, have my pharmacy yeah. software, have all this crap going on. Yeah. All at once. And it's, yeah. a, it's a lot. It's feel like I'm in, uh, oh man, what's that weird movie with Tom Cruise? Is it Tom? No, Keanu Reeves, Minority Report. Mm. Where they got all the different screens and they're yes. using their fingers and flicking flicking stuff all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> you need like a six monitor setup, man. You just I do. I, I need two. I don't have two. I need two. Yeah. Two's handy. Yes. Multiple monitors are great. We need a comprehensive district plan with support behind it in order to combat this epidemic and protect the learning environment. <clears throat> Lastly, there is a huge disconnect between administrators and teachers. The classroom in 2022 is drastically different from just three years ago. Most administrators have not been in a classroom full time in years or even decades. Many teachers currently do not feel understood, valued, or trusted as professionals from administrators and the decisions that they make. Many decisions seem to be short-term band-aids placed on gaping wounds. While these issues are not new, and there was a negative trend in these in education. Those administrators, I tell ya. Yeah. That was, I mean, that's probably a less of a yeah, that's generalized problem and more of a specific one. But yeah. No, I've never had a principal or anybody boss that I've not gotten along with, so. Yeah, I, th I think that is specific to different districts, like. My buddy Greg's a high school history teacher, and he he was in uh, he taught at this place called Scattergood and had a great admin team, but then he went to Fairfield, Iowa, and had this admin team that was like they were crazy, yeah, crazy, and about the whole the new and it, I was. Uh, CRT law. Things. Oh yeah. And so he got nervous teaching because there were people saying he was teaching CRT when he was just like, he had a unit on slavery because he's teaching or no, not even high school. It's seventh grade, seventh or eighth grade, something like that. And they had a slavery thing and they taught about slavery and he's mm -hmm. like, well, can I teach like slavery is bad? And she's like, I, I don't, I don't know that we can necessarily say it's bad. Cause that's giving an opinion. You're not, you're not just <laughs> teaching the facts. And he's like, but, but like <laughs> slavery is objectively bad, but it's objectively bad. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> and this admin like fought him on it. Wow. Uh, about whether or not that he should be, he's leaving that district. Like, I don't blame him. That seems crazy. Well, that's the murder district. It thing, is right. Yeah. It is. It was, it was where the Spanish teacher got murdered on Snapchat well, by two figure. of their students. It's all because they were like, well, one way of doing things is this whole slavery thing. Yeah. But then other people don't have that. Yep. That's the, the unit, I yeah. guess. So you can, <laughs> so you can own people or you can't. Yeah. We so, did the there US, you go. in the United States. You could for a while, but then you can't anymore. End of discussion. End of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. But uh, yeah, that that murder trial is going to be nuts, dude. Those kids like. Well, that case it. was horrendous. Horrific. Are you familiar with that one, Kyle? I just I know the the just the curse here or the yeah you know the Basic, air bones of it. I guess. Basically, two kids like harass this teacher. Then the next week, stalked her on her evening walk in a park and bludgeoned her to death with yeah. a baseball yeah. bat on recording. Like yeah, like Snapchatted it. Jesus to their friends because those just disappear, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, but you know who the defendant lawyer, defending lawyer is for the one yeah. boy. It's Branstead's wife. Oh, they brought really? it. They brought in the big guns. Hmm. And so she, the so all the prelim stuff's been going on right now. Trying you know trying to get him in the juvenile system. Yeah, right. Now they're fighting for change of venue. Yeah, which is probably called for in yeah. something like that. But uh, I don't know. I guess I don't know what firm she works for. But it's not just the firm. It's like it's her. I wouldn't. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So they they. 
they probably shot for having it heard in juvenile court first, would yes. be my guess. Yes. And then they failed. Yes. You Pretty know. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a certain age, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but and it's pretty young. I think maybe 14 where you can get waved up to big boy for for specific for, charges. Yeah, and it's I mean, I think the factors, you know, severity of the charge number one and then amount of prior juvenile court involvement. Which you, I think in this case is zero yeah, for both kids. But like first offense thing. Yeah. But the fact that I suppose it's like premeditated first degree murder. Documented. Yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Greg said uh he had had both of the kids mm. uh in class and I guess the one kid's like super affluent family. Yeah. Uh seemed like like kind of a kind of a brat of a kid, but like yeah. just kind of a a dick rich kid. Right. Not like didn't seem like a murder murdery. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Too many video games. I yeah, I tell you it's a damn yep. call of duty. Uh ruining these kids. Before 2020, the pandemic has acted as a catalyst and turned a slow negative trend into an exponential crisis. I won't list complaints without offering ideas for improvement. First, now I'm curious about really more so about what you think about his ideas here, Kyle. So interrupt me if you think something sounds cute. All administrators from the school level and throughout the ISC should be required to spend one week immersed in a high needs classroom without a suit, without people knowing your title, and in the same room all day for an entire week. If it yeah, what do you think? Everybody's gonna know who you know, are. <laughs> In Esterville. Well, right? yeah. Yeah. What do you think yeah, of the concept I, generally, though? Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting to see, like, the admin actually teach a class, you know, for a week or something now, in maybe like a special ed room or, or something like that. I don't know if it's necessary in our case, but. Sure. And, and I could, I think, Kyle, I think you're right, man. I think this is, this is more of. I'm, I don't know where this Winnedet or Gwinnedet County yeah. is or how big they are, but, like, if it's the kind of school district like Des Moines where the the admin admin are in a centralized yeah. administration building somewhere, mm. not in touch with the school right. at all type thing. But Esterville, I mean, hell. Our yeah. principals and stuff are right there. Pretty yeah. close to the trenches to begin with. Yeah, well, I th I think there is something to be said for the kind of the bureaucratic uh, approach to public ed cr fostering that sort of environment, though, mm -hmm. where the admins are more worried about making it look like they're doing stuff and, you know, how, mm -hmm. are, how are you coming on those TPS reports right. and, you know, yeah. crap like well, that. Well, that was the comparison I was going to make was to, yeah. like, the corporate slog world, <laughs> yeah. you know, where the sea levels don't have any idea what goes on on the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. and start complaining about the day-to-day -day when they don't even know the day, right. you know, that kind of old, which is a tale as old as time. Yeah, indeed. All right. Administrators truly care about improving the issues, then they need to understand what is happening. You cannot understand the issues in planned visits or 15-minute observations. Next, smaller class sizes need to be a priority. 36-plus students in an academic class makes it near impossible to manage post-COVID behavior while affecting... 36 in a classroom. That's, That's massive, never had, right? Yeah, What's, I, what? I can't physically hold that many kids in my room. <laughs> There's no way. What's your average, would you say? 15, uh, 20, 20, 23, 20, okay. 23, 24, so not bad, but you know, 36, 36 is 40-ish. I mean, that's pushing like university lecture hall yeah. territory. Yeah. I mean, my God. Yeah, we had yeah, 110 in our pharmacy class, yeah. you know. Right. But. Well, yeah, I bet. So there was about 100-ish in law school. So yeah, I I mean, fifty. You know, they kind of take the class in two mm -hmm. and break stuff up like that. So yeah, I bet. And for twenty three, is it just you, or do you have like a? Um, most well, 
just depends really i'd say i probably have a ta in one or two max classes during the day but is that for like specific students that get them yeah okay. yeah yeah but how could you manage 36 oh, like eighth yeah, graders no get or something? real yeah get real Actively meeting the much higher post-COVID needs of every student. 25 students in a sheltered ESOL class is not what's best for Gwinnett's diverse student body. Every single decision that we make should be for the students. Picture this, a circular model of teachers, parents, and administrators working together with students at the center. Currently, the circle is broken. We must offer support without threats or frivolous lawsuits. We all want the same thing, and we cannot accomplish this without supporting one another. Uh, students need clear and consistent expectations. Lastly, there needs to be transparency. In January of this year, GPS reported that. So he's speeding up because they only gave him I two think, minutes, two or, minutes like or three yeah. minutes or whatever. So he's trying to get all the stuff in and watch. They they cut they fade out his microphone. Oh, after behavior rules were at the same level, yet many teachers and people are raising red flags about what is happening. Is it the same? And. <clears throat> As any good leader can tell yeah. you, you cannot fix a problem that you want to make exist. <laughs> like, okay, wow. you're done. Screw you. You need to start playing the yeah. wrap it up music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the admin that he's talking about. Yep. Probably, right? Probably. <laughs> Dr. Trees. That's, uh, that's, that's just, yeah. Voiceless teachers in a poetic. Well, and I give him props for making an effort, and he yeah. concisely put a great list of grievances and then solution proposals together which you yeah. do have and you which have you to do. do that yeah. yeah you know if you're gonna lay out the problems you gotta have you guys ever been to like an education what is it school board meeting oh i yeah. never have dude i i want to go without anyone knowing i'm that going yeah kind of thing like yeah. do they video those because i think it would uh, be fun they to... used during covid they did but can you, are they still archived? I, want, I just want to see some like parents getting up there and say some wacky stuff. Yeah, I mean, it definitely happens. Yeah. They're pretty interesting, really. If you Mrs. have a spike. Jones gave my kid detention. <laughs> stuff like that? Most of that stuff's behind closed doors. Okay. They told my kid he couldn't <laughs> eat the hot lunch. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> I'm imagining if they took our jobs. That damn Michelle Obama wants to make him eat lettuce. That's how that pipeline thing was for the. Was that good? So Did you go? oh, dude, it was so good. <laughs> the so, carbon pipeline. Yeah. The, so the carbon pipeline. So they were are required by law to do informational meetings in every county that they. Are proposing, proposing eminent d domain. Well, and right? but you, you know, I mean, their obviously pr their proposal is to do mon you know, just fair monetary consideration. Sure. And uh, but, but you have to sell, you know, and eventually eminent domain could possibly be on the table if you know uh, lots of things would happen. But you know, they're required to put all this stuff out there. And there were people from the state supervising this to make sure that the company met the criterion that they were supposed to do. Sure. I mean, they weren't like saying, yes, you're doing it or no, you're not. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of they're feedback, just watching. but they're watching. And they're the idea there is that the state is supposed to be ensuring that the company meets its burden. Sure. These, and it's step one of like 200 you know, of what's before there's like a shovel in the ground. <laughs> and it was uh, right out of South Park, man. Like, <laughs> I tell you what, Mr. Des Moines, you come, up <laughs> come up here and they took our jibs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the whole place was packed, like chairs, Where standing room, VFW. It oh was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best venue. <laughs> and the, some guy got up and was like, you know, I'm a, I work at a ethanol plant, and this is like a good deal because blah blah blah, and we're like barely making it right now, and the credits, and you know, sure. da, da, da. this all fell on deaf ears. And, then and some farmers like you. <laughs> You're going to put a pipeline in my thing and then it's going to blow up and kill kids and you know <laughs> just all this like all this hyperbole 
<laughs> well, the world, I mean, we live in a world of hyperbole. Yeah. Everything's the most of everything, yeah, you know? Right. <laughs> Nothing's just... <laughs> awesome. It was great, though. Oh, that would have been fun. Big that... super spreader event, though, last November. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're not going to wear masks. Lots, lots of COVID, me? yeah. Sons of COVID. Yeah. We're selling more COVID tests again, Kyle. Good. Got some new variants about, coming through. Need about thirty cases. I th- so I'm gonna test positive a week or two before I leave for vacation. I think <laughs> that way I can have a super vacation. Yep. There you go. Is that how that works? <laughs> yep. Super COVID. <laughs> Where are you going on vacation? We're taking a trip to the Black Hills in excellent July. Yeah. Right. So. Cool. We'll see. Laura just got back from a family trip in Colorado, and I think was a little had a little family fatigue by the end of it. So yeah, now well, we're turning around doing the same thing again. But is it family? Too? Fam, family, fam, oh, bam oh, again. Fam, bam, huh? Basically, same program except just in the Black Hills <laughs> and Northern. not in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're doing Alaska cruise. Oh, fun with eighteen family members. Yeah. Whoa. On a boat. No escape then. They're in laws. Yeah, okay. It's the in laws. Yeah. We'll see. Kyle's going to Duluth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. Up in the North Shore, huh? Way up north. Way up yep, there. going a couple weeks. Gonna love that. <laughs> Excuse me. Love that car ride up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's stretching see. it out over a couple of days, though, right? Yeah, we're going to try. I think we're staying at Dylan's place. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going up there north. It's pretty up there. Yeah, Skeeters never been. the size so. of your head, though. Yeah. Uh, never been. Maybe see a bear or two. Yeah. From the old Iron Range. You're, I, I, you'll be surprised how cold it is, even in, yeah. like, June. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I I dress for, like, October weather-ish or September. Oh, yeah. The lake's going to yeah. be in the 50s. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Wow. Yeah, I was there like peak summer, and I mean, you get a well, it was sort of weather like what we were golfing in yesterday. Oh, it's sort of like yeah. that, like you Seattle. Know? Yeah. yeah, it's like, like a cold high of sixty-five or something. You know, perfect, moist, feeling. and moist. Yeah, very, very moist. I interviewed in Duluth in freaking January oh. or Ugh. February. February. How'd you even get there? <laughs> <laughs> Over a couple days, but in the Buick <laughs> with snowshoes, front and a, wheel drive Buick, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I I interviewed for their pharmacy program, uh, and there was just no way. Yeah, it was so damn cool. I mean, it, it was a kind of thing where you, once you got to the school, they have tunnels for all the buildings, so you walk underground. You never oh. go outside, like in yeah. Eskimo. Yeah, or it's salt. Well, station worker, but. and it just goes to show how bad the weather really. Because like, where we live, by most of the world's metric, is unbelievably shitty Awful. weather, just horrible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it can what fifty below wind chill, and it's like yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like February around here, and Duluth yeah. is like that fifty below wind chill, but with lake effect snow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> feet and feet and yeah. feet and then uh, yeah way shorter warm season too mm-hmm. oh man beautiful pretty country it is neat yeah yeah you yeah. can ski up there yeah I mean, they're skiing you betcha oh well, yeah, yeah they got yeah. they got the ski jumpers there too you betcha yeah go down to big old alpine yeah well yeah you'll <laughs> have fun we're looking forward to it yeah, yeah. this is dope good my eyes up there too Oh, that's yeah. a little slice of heaven. Yeah, just a little farther north up the shore. It's no Lake Okaboji. But... That's true. <laughs> but where is? There's only There's one. There's only village. one Lake Okaboji. Yeah. yeah, you know. All right. It looked like Kyle was taking a couple cre- or Kevin was taking a couple credits tonight visiting the old museum. Yeah. Slide. Nice. Yeah. Boge. Yeah, he's boging. Yep. Well, I think Kyle wants to quit, so. I am exhausted, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to get home yeah. and go to bed, too. All righty. got to dispense drugs tomorrow. Good episode, boys. All right. We'll stop. We'll see you, coach. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, people. Take it easy, man. I saw Owen signed up for uh, SDSU. Yeah, that's legit. Well, he that's verbally committed. So that's exciting, dude. Yeah, they're uh, he's pretty legit. Tournament time, indeed. Team, you know. Yeah. Yep. Year after year. Mm Mm-hmm. They're they're legit. In a lot of sports, their football team's really good. Yeah. Yep. Be fun to watch. 